Um, hi everyone, uh, this tutorial is on uh, NBO analysis, natural bond orbital analysis, and it requires an additional program um, just called very conveniently NBO. So I will very quickly go through um, the idea behind NBOs and then I'll show you how to set up a calculation from Gaussian output. Uh, so let's start uh, to um, sort of visualize what are NBOs um, very roughly. The normal way of um, creating molecular orbitals would be to combine atomic orbitals, for example, these two, SP, uh, two P orbitals um, into bonding and antibonding, and then you end up with these weird shapes like this, and um, most people um, have difficulty to analyze what these shapes mean and interpret them uh, in such a way that it's useful to analyze their molecule and um, that's why the NBO um, sort of idea um, became such a popular uh, thing to do on uh, new molecules is basically um, taking the molecular orbitals created from the wave function and then sort of reshaping them into shapes that are easy to interpret by a human. So we are used to think about bonds as, you know, you have two electrons in a bond and so that would be one bonding orbital and then up higher in energy there will be an anti-bonding orbital. Um, and we we can sort of visualize it in our heads uh, in a very simple manner and so these orbitals that are natural bond orbitals they reflect this simplified um, sort of picture of the molecular orbitals uh, and it helps you understand what's going on in your molecule much better than this. So NBO is actually um, an additional package uh, which is not part of Gaussian, you have to purchase it unfortunately there's it's not free um, but as a lot of universities have it as a package uh, together with Gaussian so you should um, inquire whether you have like if you can use it or not if not you could probably request to buy it perhaps it's not very expensive um, so this is the uh, official website for the program and they have uh, the, the theory explaining what are NBOs with all the formulas and everything you want to know uh, in the link right here um, and the manual um, PDF version of it is up here and you also have tutorials to look at if you want um, it, it's quite nicely done um, so I will not uh, spend too much time on their website I would just want to show you um, like a very uh, simple Gaussian input to call on the NBO program assuming that it has already been installed and linked um, by path to Gaussian uh, we're going to first look at ammonia uh, so boom our first molecule of the day is NH3 and um, I want to use NBO to show you uh, that it's going to find the lone pair on the nitrogen um, and basically correctly describe the um, electron positioning basically in a Lewis structure of this molecule. So um, I have already optimized the geometry but if you haven't you'll have to do it um, prior to the NBO. Um, if you add the opt keyword right here in the command line then certain um, especially older version of Gaussian will actually do it at every single SCF uh, cycle which will kind of take longer than um, expected so preferably do the optimization first and then the NBO analysis. Uh, to call on the NBO program you just have to put the POP equals NBO keyword um, in the top line 
and you're ready to go. That's that's it. Everything else stays the same. Uh, the output um, looks like this. I just want to find the top header of the NBO and you can search for star 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 NBO and you will get to the header right away. Now um, the first uh, piece of information that you have is the types of atomic orbitals that has been used. The amount of atomic orbitals that you will have depends on the basis set that you have used. Um, then you have the different types of atomic orbitals. You have the core, valence, and Rydberg, and obviously y the energy are listed on the last column here, and the occupancy is here. Um, and we can see that the core electron has much lower energy than the valence one, sort of expected. Uh, then if you scroll lower down you're gonna see summary of natural um, population analysis so these are the molecular orbitals and they go by atom you get the natural charge the core occupancy valence Rydberg and you get the total um, so this is basically the summary of the calculation but if you keep on scrolling down you're gonna see the Lewis structure of your uh, molecule so in our case we have two electrons in the core CR um, <coughs> orbital at the nitrogen and the shape of this orbital is 100% S now uh, it has also identified two electrons in the lone pair LP on the nitrogen and the shape of this orbital is 20% 21% S and 79% P um, so like a deformed sp3 uh, and now we also have two bonding orbitals um, two electrons in each of the three uh, bonding orbitals between nitrogen and hydrogen right and you also get this, their hybridization over here okay so that's it for the uh, NH3 the other molecule that I wanted to um, show you is a carbene so I put this carbene in a triplet state because I want to uh, illustrate that um, the MBO will be able to find the unpaired electrons in different orbitals right so carbenes can be in um, depending on how you pair up the electrons the two free electrons left here they're either paired up so singlet or not paired up so triplet and the input um, here will look like this. So now we're doing unrestricted Hartree Fock and the um, multiplicity is three. Okay, so the output, same idea. Just gonna search for the header. And uh, now if you notice here, after the energy column, we have an additional one, it's the spin because now we have unpaired electrons um, and if you scroll to the summary then you will get natural spin density um, uh, what is spin density? so if you're doing unrestricted Hartree Fock then you have your um, each orbital would be basically split into the alpha orbital and the beta orbital and uh, when you do when the electrons are paired up then when you do the density at the alpha minus the density of the beta, you will basically cancel them out and you will get zero. But if you have a case like here, then when you do alpha minus beta, you do not get zero. And therefore you have an unpaired um, electron and you get spin density. So here it says that at the carbon, I have two unpaired electrons. All right. And now let's see where it they have been placed if you scroll down to the um, alpha orbitals oh I already passed it sorry there you go so I'm gonna have uh, one electron at the core on carbon and then I'm gonna have two electrons in different lone pair orbitals right and they will have different hybridizations 
Okay, so 1 is 32% S and 69% P, and the other one is 100% P. So different shapes. And if you scroll lower to the beta orbitals, then in the Lewis structure, you actually don't see the unpaired electrons at all because they're only in the alpha orbitals. Okay. Um, so, uh, what else did I wanted to add? Uh, if you go into um, the lab manual, there are a lot many more keywords uh, that are available so you can fine tune the type of calculation that the MBO package can do. Um, there are a lot of online tutorials, uh, so this one even has a sample input for Gaussian. You can just plug it in and run it and you will get the output um, that they expect over here with all the explanations and details and it's very good um, as a start off. Then if you also go into this website, it's a blog by uh, Dr. Barroso. It's very good. It has a lot of information. And one of the posts is on NBO and on the um, basically different options that you can have and the different pieces of the output. Um, so if you have time, uh, look through that. It, it's a very good blog. You should definitely take a look at it, not only for NBOs, but for a lot of any um, other calculations. Um, and on that, I think... Um, and that's it. Uh, very rough overview, but there's a lot of information out there and you can um, read it all on their website. It's very well done. So that's it for this tutorial. See you next time.